Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time and location you are tuned to our channel, thanks a lot for the visit. Mr. Angelivia said that the disbursement process is on his final lapse and uh, they are doing their final preparation for disbursement. <laughs> we don't know where he's getting his information from, but <laughs> if his information is credible, we thank God. All we need is disbursement. No matter where the information is coming from, all we just need is let them disburse. So let's listen to Mr. Angelivia. Let's listen to him. Let's listen to him. We will look critically at the current concepts and updates in the grant ecosystem. There are circulating trends across the WhatsApps and the Telegram groups. Despite the conflict that is ongoing in the grant ecosystem, one reality is paramount. The activities of disbursement is on a speedily progressive step towards realization of the wildly anticipated disbursement. Like I've stated in my previous video, the whole activities that is ongoing in the grant ecosystem has nothing to do with disbursement. Those that are aware of this reality are not disturbing their minds. Factions emerges in the ecosystem, and these factions, some of them are supporting the UAAG, while others are siding the AGPGN. At this moment, for example, those that are citing the UAAG are bent on smearing the character and reputation of the AGPGN, while those that are citing the AGPGN are striving to protect their hard-gotten integrity and identity. The truth remains, none of these people need to be blackmailed from the UAAG we come to know the AGPGN. From the AGPGN comes about the UAAG. Therefore, creating factions loyal to UAAG or factions loyal to AGPGN will not put the grant in your bank account. What will put the grant in your bank account is the conciliation of the factions in the UAAG and the AGPGN so disbursement can start taking place. There is a new faction that bed a few days ago in the grant ecosystem, led by Mrs. Temitokwe. The intent of this group is to assemble proof of payment, hence they will uh, embark on litigation or petition of the grant handlers that assure the masses that they have grants to disburse. Have noticed that after this group started gathering proof of payment, the members, the supporters of the UAAG are now accusing the AGPGN of sponsoring the collation of this proof of payment. But even in that video, Mrs. Temitokwe have stated that if after they have completed investigating the UAAG, they will equally investigate the AGPGN or call for collation of proof of payment emanating from the camp of the AGPGN if there is need for that. One particular factor we need to take notice of in all this is the activity of the masses time and again is influenced by the activities of the grant handler. For example, a few weeks ago, Apostle Ambassador Ken stated in ITB that he has not collected monies from the NGOs, that he only took a loan from them. That particular comment gives birth to agitation and resentment in the ecosystem. Whereas if he never made such comment, those reactions from NGO CEOs should have happened in the first place. In the same vein, the current action of Mrs. Temitokwe is again influenced by activities of certain people in the camp of the UAAG. Remember, scores of days ago, some supporters of the UAAG infiltrated almost all the WhatsApps and Telegram groups with agitative and protesting messages, all aiming at uh, inciting the masses against the AGPGN. Messages like the AGPGN are not wishing good for the masses. They are planning on dispersing palliative, not grants. They have shared a greater percentage of the grants to themselves and coming to disperse tokens or palliative to the masses. We are not seeking palliative. These are messages that were propagated by the camp of the UAAG. 
again another camp came up with the concept that the HBGN are planning of setting an injunction to stop Apostle Ken from dispersing the grants he's wishing for the masses. These campaign messages or incitive messages, incitive statements emanating from supporters of the UAAG have again stimulated some deep and thoughtful thinking subscribers of this grant to start asking themselves certain sensitive and pertinent questions. Questions like, why will the AGPGN put an injunction to stop Apostle Ken if he has a grant to disperse? In the real judicial balance, everyone is aware that, for example, if Apostle Ken has a grant to disperse, he has sourced for a grant and he has the document backing him up or a mandate warranting him to disperse grants, nobody can place an injunction against Apostle Ken or the UAAG disposing such a grant. Therefore, looking at it critically, it seems as if the whole messages that is propagated by the supporters of the UAAG is an attempt to mount self-defense or pictures painted to distract the subscribers out of the reality. Some people have begun to think within themselves that these are all defensive statements. It seems a personal ambassador Ken doesn't have a grant to disburse or he doesn't have any documents to warrant him to disburse the grant in the first place. That is why they are using the AGPGN to shield themselves by accusing the AGPGN. So when the, the likes of Mrs. Temitope looks at it critically, she now decides that it's important to collect the proof of payment of the UAAG and now ask Apostle Ken to tender the document of these grants as it bears his name to their confirmation. There is no smoke without fire. All these activities we are seeing in the grant ecosystem will give birth or will stimulate to awaken responses from the subscribers. During the partners meeting between the UAAG and the NGO CEOs a few weeks ago, the last partners meeting, you can recall that Apostle Ambassador Dr. Ken Wakama stated that he has a grant to disperse to the masses, not palliative. Painting a picture that the AGPGN are wishing to disperse palliative to the masses, not grant. And the masses begin to look at the AGPGN as being against the progress of masses, wishing to give peanuts that doesn't change the life status of the masses or subscribers of this grant. Those statements are not what is expected. Currently, we are preaching for peace, for reconciliation. That was a very sensitive meeting that Apostle Ambassador Kenshla communicated the peace message, the reconciliating message to the entire subscribers to unite those factions, to collapse the factions, to speak in support of disbursement. Making such a statement immediately incites certain members of the masses who did not know the truth against the AGPGN. They start seeing that AGPGN against the masses, whereas they are the actual messiahs that are working to ensure disbursement take place. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every statement that you make as a grant handler, as a, an added supporter of a grant handler, there is an equal and opposite reaction from the opposing camp, from the people you are accusing. When Apostle Ambassador Ken stated that everyone should shift their sword, should stop fighting. To me, he should have specifically mentioned the names of those people that should stop fighting or attacking the AGPGN, hence there will be peace. He should have outrightly requested for the likes of George Lovely and his team members, Kendra Investments, Chief Agogo, every other supporters of the UAAG to stop writing incitive messages. To me, he should have warned them not to come to the media and say Apostle Ambassador Ken is the one going to disperse the grant. His name is on the document. He's the country director of the UAAG. He's going to disperse this grant and embarrass those betrayers called the AGPGN. In the public parlance, it doesn't show maturity when mature men come and speak like children. It's simply likened to people making 
jestful comment merely to raise a laugh. Why will anyone want to make a jestful comment at this moment, at this tensed moment, merely to raise a laugh? or for people to start mocking the AGPGN. Some have said they will not find sand to bury their shameful faces. Whereas the same UAAG who promised grant subscribers that immediately after verification, the alert will keep entering the phone as they are being screened as they are receiving the alert. They fell in that perspective, fell during December where they promised that if there was another one week, disbursement will have taken place. Fell again when it comes to January and disbursement did not take place. February, March, disbursement did not take place. What reason did anyone have to make any mocking or jestful comments at the moment on anyone at this moment in the ecosystem? If there is any action or progress you are establishing to bring about disbursement, it doesn't call for the supporters of these facilitators coming to criticize, blaspheme, blackmail these particular same people that are working to ensure the grant that was not secured that everyone should have gone home without is finally being secured for the masses to take home to have something to boast of after spending seven or to ten years in the ecosystem we are all campaigning for the grant handlers the agpgn and the uaag to come together and bring about disbursement but just a few days ago pastor donald obasi come in with another yet incisive statement there's a particular point he stated that the agpgn said earlier that even if it takes 10 years to stop uaag from disbursing they will gladly do so why will any supporter of the UAAG bring this sort of incitative statement at this critical moment to the media space? What is their aim? The supporters of the UAAG are making even more provocative speech, like the one Barista Oga published this morning on the WhatsApp group, saying you are expecting the federal government to offer you trillions of naira to disperse to the masses. You are having a very bad dream. A very bad dream. Why will anyone make such statements at this weather? When you have not disposed the grant, you have delayed longer than expected, you have not disposed the grant, and you are still having the courage to come in and make such jestful comments. What is the sense in all this? The last time I checked, those national escorts in the AGPGN are no more talking. If they are coming to talk, they are either coming to defend themselves, for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So if the national schools of the AGPGN are not talking, Oscar Dawood is no more talking as he used to. He's no more insulting Apostle Ken as he used to. Comrade Abdul is not coming to make provocative statements. Well, then why will anyone, any ranking member in the UAAG camp be coming to the public to make provocative and insightful statements? We can truly see who is waging for war in this ecosystem or who is conducting themselves in colors that will delay disbursement even further. One certain fellow came on this morning and wrote on one of the WhatsApp group, UAAG, disbursement 0%. AGPGN 99.9% is it necessary at this moment the masses doesn't care whether it is the UAAG or the AGPGN that have grants to disperse all what the masses need is disbursement irrespective of whose camp or authority it's coming from so you don't need to come and speak in ways that seem as if UAAG have no grants to disperse or speak in ways that reveals that the AGPGN are the one in charge of disbursement. There is a certain truth I'm actually here to reveal to you today. When some people are accusing Abdul or the AGPGN of taking grants that Apostle Ken shall have disbursed to disperse on their names, they are actually making misleading statements. At this moment, Abdul, although he reserved the right to become a grant handler, at this current grant ecosystem, where everyone is expecting the grant that we subscribe for since March 2023 to this moment, AGPGN doesn't have a grant to disburse to the masses. There are only four runners of 
disbursement we are all anticipating. Comrade Abdul that everyone is accusing of denying Apostle Ken. Can someone even ask himself? This is the same Abdul that some people are calling them palace boys, street boys, uneducated people. And you are now saying it is the same uneducated street boy that is denying Apostle Ken grant to this boss. We are eating our words time and again. So, Abdul is not limiting or restricting Apostle Ken from disposing any grant. He is just a forerunner. We are all aware of the story. At a certain time, they discover that there is no grant called UAAG grant. The masses shall have retired home with nothing in this ecosystem. But as God will have it, God always used lowly people to change destinies of generations, just like he used Joseph to change history of his Israelite generation. He used Moses to change history of his generation, just like he used David. Time and again, God uses people without identity to alter destinies of a striving generation. So he uses these people to locate Pastor John, the same Pastor John that Chief Agogun directed people to go and protest in his redeemed Christian church. The same Pastor John is the reason behind this progressive state in disbursement that we are. Through the power of Holy Spirit, he was able to locate the IG and Hajia, which are the authorities, the physical, tangible authorities, genuine authorities, finally, the grant ecosystem to have in the history of this ecosystem. And here we are accusing the same Abdul of being a grant handler. Abdul doesn't give directive to the federal government. Who is he to ask federal government not to give a Ken grant to his boss? All what Abdul is doing is receiving a briefing from this authority. When he is not even there during the meetings with the government committee and the grant handler, he is only being briefed by the messenger, Pastor John, time and again. So whatever Pastor John intimates the all grants pressure group, that is what they do. So the masses should know who is their enemy and who is their foe. Know your friend and your foe. God has already bring the LGPGN to intervene on a supposedly sad story, sorry story for the masses. If we were continuing in the state of that uniform propagation of activity towards this person, everyone should have finally gone home with nothing. What we need at the moment, but the whole activity planning down is purely activities influenced by distrust, lies, greed, injustice. In a democratic society, only conditions that brings about peace and unity is when justice, fairness and equity is uphold to the highest rank. An attempt to remove justice, fairness and equity from the activities of the leadership of every given society, there will be a state of degeneration of peace to chaos. Now we can paint a cultural and tribal or religious sentiment. We can say that Muslims are fighting to snatch grants from a Christian to his boss. What back of evidence do we have to this? It's understood that when people share different cultural ethnical and religious backgrounds, there's that factor of taking sides. When the AGPGN and the UAAG started this entire activity, they never take sides, they never observe the religious and cultural boundary. For those factors playing down at this climax stage, it's evidence that there have been betrayals, there have been lies, there have been elements or a of distrust during the interaction of these authorities, this leadership. Now to the factor that everyone wants to hear, when is disbursement going to take place? I revealed in my very last video that disbursement will take place before the 2024 Democracy Day. Yes, it's confirmed. 
approval to disburse the grant to the masses was given since one week or two weeks ago. If not for all those distractions that was ongoing a few days ago in this ecosystem, disbursement should have taken place. So we are at a very progressive final stage to disbursement. Any moment from now, money will start rolling to the account. There are few activities or factors that were supposed to be set in place before the money starts rolling out, which is the MOU. You already know who is supposed to call for the MOU signing. The UAAG are the one to call for MOU signing, while the authorities are the one to give directive for the money to move out. But in instances where the factions of the AGPGN and the UAAG or the supporters are attacking the AGPGN, these particular authorities that are supposed to transfer the money to the grant handler can never transfer the money in such a degenerative state. So it takes the UAAG coming together and harmonizing their interest with the AGPG and for the money to move. This week has already been stalled by the labor strike. The, the strike has already been called off, but the week is gone. If there is true reconciliation between the factions of the AGPGN and the UAAG, then we expect this disbursement to start next week. The president of this country wants to use disbursement of these grants as part of the activities to celebrate this year's Democracy Day. But none of these people can stop it. And from the way things are going, whether you accept to harmonize the decisions of this authority or not, an order has already been given. You, the resistance, the activities of any factor, any of these grant promoters can never delay disbursement any further. It has come to a final stage where the authority can pick anyone to disburse these grants. The, the prayer is, let this authority not pick any data to disburse these grants. There will be disaster across the factions in the ecosystem. Especially for those NGOs that subscribe through UAAG or the AGPGN. They have traveled from their respective states, lodged in Abuja. Some people have spent money since the era of Sam Tepakon Yoba till today, millions of naira. So the prayer is let this authority not because of the continuous disunity between the UAAG. Because I know the AGPGN are always open to embrace peace. To ensure disbursement take place, let the resistance that is continually being witnessed on daily basis from the camp of the UAAG not force the authority to pick any data and disburse these grants to the masses. The government, as you already know, doesn't have any specific phase they look at. They consider fulfilling their political mandate. If the intent of the federal government is to use disbursement of these grants to mark this year Democracy Day, it can pick data in the bank or CBN database and disburse the grant into. And all these people that are here fighting for unnecessary interest, for unnecessary or irrelevant factor, will lose out. The NGO that spent millions of naira to get themselves to where they are to support the activity of screening and verification or the entire logistics that is required to achieve all these successes will be the one becoming casualties. This alone should compel both the UAAG supporters, the UAAG country director and the AGPGN members to come together and reconcile hence this audience of NGO CEOs and subscribers that subscribe for these grants can then become the beneficiaries of these particular grants. These messages that most of these supporters are always writing are directly on the table of this government authority. And when it always comes from one source, they can take any decision against such source. Is an advice we are giving. We are not grant handler. We are subscribers of the grants, the masses, sending the message of reconciliation and a message of progress and success to the grant handler. The masses are once again calling on the UAAG and the AGPGN authorities to come together for the sake of the masses, reconcile and harmonize their interests and dispose this grant let this grant be disposed to the masses. 
The former president of Nigeria, President Ebele Goodluck Jonathan, stated that no blood of a single Nigerian can be sacrificed on the altar of his own political aspiration. He stepped aside. If not bearing any status or title will bring about disbursement, sacrifice that status and title. Let disbursement take place. This is not a time to hold anything quite important, except this thing is for the interest of disbursement taking place to the benefit of the masses. The interest of the masses supersedes every other interest. This is a time to compromise. This is a time to let go every standing factor. This is not a time to further personal or cabal aspirations. It's the time to further the interest of the dying masses. This is the message of the masses to the Grand Hamba. Disbursement, I know, will definitely take place. We pray this taking place before 12 June. At least, Nigerian masses will finally secure the resources to build meaningful, reputable, and exciting life. The economy will be stimulated. Everyone will be happy. We did not come to the grand ecosystem with enemies, and we will not depart with even one. If you have enemies right now, reconcile. After all, it's one source we come from, and one source we shall all return. Kindly subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification bell, hence when I publish the next content, you will be immediately notified. Thank you for having me on Omgilivia TV today. I'm the CEO of this channel. Bye.